Soldering is an essential part of electronics, but the smoke from solder contains toxic fumes that can be hazardous to your health. Today in the workshop, we'll construct a solder fume extractor to clean the air around your soldering environment. Hey, welcome to the workshop. Today's project is an essential device for anyone who works with electronics and does a lot of soldering. And that is a solder fume extractor, which I have over here. This is what we're going to be building. As you can see, it's a relatively compact design. I've colored it to match the uh, colors of my workshop, but of course you can make it any color that you'd like. It's a very simple device. It's got an on-off switch on the side here. The solder fumes are inhaled on this side and are exhausted on the other side. They are passed through a charcoal filter before they're exhausted to decrease some of their toxicity a bit. Um, the head can uh, move up and down a bit, which is a nice little feature, so you can angle it toward the area you're soldering. And it's relatively compact. It just sits here right on my soldering area. I do all my soldering over this blue silicone pad, and I can basically aim it at the area that I'm soldering, and it'll take the fumes from the soldering away from my face and uh, through the device over here and exhaust them. So let's go ahead and build this unit. So before I go through all the trouble of building this project, I'd like to make certain it actually has a reasonable chance of succeeding. So what I've done is I've arranged this little demonstration. I've placed a black background here with hopes that it makes it a little easier to see the solder smoke. I want to show you the smoke without the fan first of all. So let's just burn some solder over here. And hopefully you can see the smoke is just rising into the air. It's just going all over the place. This, of course, is the effect that we're trying to eliminate with the fume extractor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power up the fume extractor. Now what I've done is I've taken the fan that I'm going to be using for the fume extractor design. I've taken the filter, the fume filter, and I've just clipped it onto the back of the fan. Now that's going to reduce the airflow in the fan. And I want to see if it's sufficient enough to actually still draw the smoke from the uh, solder. So let's power up the fan first. And let's just do some soldering. And as you can see, the smoke is clearly attracted to the uh, to the fan. Now, I can move that back even more. And it's still doing a pretty good job of attracting the smoke. I'm about maybe eight, nine inches now from the fan. And it's still sucking the smoke in. And the smoke is indeed being absorbed by the filter as well. I don't see any smoke coming out the other side of the fan. So it looks like this is going to be an actual effect of design, and it's worth pursuing. So let's go and build it. So let's take a look at the components we're going to be using to build the fume extractor. The main component is the fan. And I chose this particular fan because it had a high rating when I read the reviews for it. It's made by B Gears. It's called the B Blaster 120. This thing cost me about $12, which isn't too expensive, but you can find fans cheaper than this. One of the reasons I chose it was that it moves 104 cubic feet of air per minute, and I wanted something powerful for my fume extractor. At the same time, it has a noise rating of 36 dBA. Now to put that in perspective, some other fans I saw that moved about the same amount of air had noise ratings up to about 45 dBA. And as sound doubles every 3 decibels, they would have been considerably noisier. However, if uh, you want to be a little cheaper on building this and you don't mind the noise, you could certainly buy a fan for about half the price. The same goes for the filter. Now this is actually a filter made for fumes extractors. It's made by a company called Johnard, and I bought a pack of these, a three pack for $18, so it's about $6 a filter. Now if you're looking around, you can find uh, charcoal filters that are cheaper than this. Uh, you might look at the ones they use for kitty litter pans. I found that you could get a three pack of those for about $6, and you would have to cut them to fit. A lot of them had a hole in the center of them, but that probably wouldn't matter because that's where the motor of the fan is anyway. So you can see save a few dollars on this if you wanted to. 
Now one other reason for choosing the 120mm uh, B-Gears fan is the availability of these fan filters and I'll show you how these work. I've got one taken apart over here. I got a two pack of these for about five bucks. This piece mounts on the actual fan itself and it's the same uh, diameter as the fan. This little filter over here goes into here and then this snaps on top of this to create an assembly like this. And originally when I saw this online I ordered it with hopes that I could put my filter here, just cut it to size and place it in there. But as you can see there's a substantial difference in the thickness of these filters and so I think it's going to compress it too much so I've designed it a bit differently but I'm still going to use this filter on one end of the fan to keep the dust and dirt out of it and the other pieces of course are the wood that I'm going to be using I've already cut the wood but I haven't drilled or milled it yet um, I've got four pieces that I'm going to arrange just as a frame for my fan so this is going to be where the fan itself drops into if you can imagine that and I've got these two pieces of wood that are going to go on the side and hold the frame. This uh, piece of 2x4 that I've put at the bottom is going to supply some weight to make sure the whole thing doesn't tip over on the base. And then a couple of bolts that I'm going to have to cut down the size that are going to be mounted here. Um, I'll mount them so that they're flush and they don't hit the fan and that's going to allow the fan to pivot back and forth so I can angle it uh, toward my soldering. So let's go and build this thing now. This is the clamping arrangement I used to keep the wood secure while I worked on it. I began by drilling a 1 8 inch pilot hole. Then I used my spade bit to drill the 7 8 inch hole. Now this hole needs to go an inch and a quarter down so I had to do this in several passes as it builds up a lot of heat during the drilling process. I then took a 1 quarter inch bit and drilled down into the hole that I previously had made. This is the entrance for the fan wire. I tested it by passing a wire through. Finally, I took the 1 quarter inch bit and drilled the hole for the power wire. I used a miter box to cut the pieces for the frame. If you have a table saw, you could use that as well. When finished, it created a frame that fit around the fan. I then took the two side pieces and clamped them together and drilled a hole through the center with a 1 quarter inch bit. This is for the pivot bolt. On the inside of the pieces, I took a half inch bit to enlarge the hole slightly, followed by a 3 8 inch bit. This tapers the hole for the head of the screw. I then used the half inch bit on the other side to taper it for the nut. When finished, the bolt and nut will sit flush on the frame. This is the arrangement I used to clamp the wood while gluing. I clamped and glued three sides and used a finishing nail to hold it. I then marked out the position of the fan wire on the bottom piece and used a quarter inch drill bit to drill that hole. Finally, I glued that piece to the frame and the frame is complete. I clamped both side pieces together and used a quarter inch bit to drill out the hole for the pivot bolt. I then took one piece and drilled out the half inch hole for the switch. Finally on both pieces I drilled a 1 8 inch hole for the wood screw. I used latex paint left over from building my workshop to paint the pieces, but spray paint would probably work better. I used a couple of pieces of wood and some pieces of wire to hold these pieces while they dried. I used the connector supplied with the fan to identify the polarity of the wires. I then cut the wire and stripped back the sensor wire which is not used in this design. Now it's time to place the filter on the intake side. I used the screws provided with the B-Gears fan to install the B-Gears fan filter mounting plate.
I then assembled the filter and snapped it onto the fan. Make certain that you have the airflow going in the correct direction. Now it's time to put the pivot bolts into the frame. Screw them in and secure them. Thread the fan wire through the hole and place the fan into the frame. It should sit securely. Now turn it on to its face. Next we are going to modify the B-Gears filter plate using the spacers and screws. First we need to cut out the filter plate. Take the mounting plate and some wire snippers and cut the plastic to create an opening. Next use the sheet metal screws and install the spacers on all four corners. Now mount this assembly onto the fan. Make certain to tighten the screws but don't over tighten as you may crack the plastic. Next we need to modify our filter material. Use the small filter supplied with the B-Gears filter as a template to cut it out to 120 millimeters square. Then cut the corners to allow clearance for the spacers. Mount the finished filter into the fan assembly. And then snap the cover of the B-Gears filter assembly onto it. This completes the fan assembly. Start by threading the fan wire and the power wire through the base block. Tie a knot in both of the wires. This will act as a strain relief to prevent the wire from being pulled back through the block. Next mount the switch onto the side plate. I used epoxy putty to do this, but you could also use hot glue if you wished. If you're working with epoxy putty, remember it dries in about five minutes, so you need to be fast. Now solder the common wires together. I used a piece of heat shrink tubing once I'd finished the solder joint. Finally solder the two remaining wires to the power switch. Use the wood screw to secure the switch and side plate assembly to the base block. Make certain that you line it up correctly. Now take a washer and put it onto the pivot bolt. Pass that through the side plate. Use another washer and a nut to secure it. Now take the other side plate and install the small wood screw part way. Use the two washers and the nut to secure the other side of the pivot bolt to the side plate. Finally, line up the side plate and secure it with the wood screw. Congratulations, your fume extractor is complete. Now put it on your workbench and enjoy a smoke-free soldering environment. If you like this video, then I have a feeling you'll like some of the other videos I have. I do videos about things like Arduinos and Raspberry Pis, and about building things for the Internet of Things, building robots and building quadcopters, and all kinds of cool stuff. So why don't you hit the subscribe button that you'll find just below the video, just right down there. And you can be aware of every new video that I make. YouTube will send you off an email. And speaking of email, head over to DroneBotWorkshop.com and sign up for the email list. In appreciation, I'll send you a free ebook about working with Arduinos. 
And after that, I'll send you an occasional email to let you know what's going on on the website. I promise no spam. I hate that crap just as much as you do. So let's be friends. Subscribe today and I'll see you soon.